Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. The apes of the lineage Hominoidea, which in modern times includes the gibbons, orangutans, gorillas, chimpanzees and humans, first appeared in Africa around the time of the Oligocene-Miocene boundary about 25 million years ago. They form the sister lineage of the Old World primates of the family Cercopithecidae, which technically also makes apes a specialised subset of monkeys themselves. Indeed, early Miocene hominoids were quite similar in some ways to living tailless monkeys such as macaques, having a quadrupedal walking stance without the ability to knuckle walk, being generally quite small in comparison to the great apes, and were not well adapted for brachiating, instead climbing on the tops of branches rather than hanging underneath. Their wrist bones tended to also be quite similar to those of old world monkeys, although their ape-like features include enhanced grasping capabilities, stabilised elbow joints, as well as their facial structures. Early forms include the dendropithecids and the well-preserved genus Proconsul, which were frugivorous arboreal animals that were capable of living in a variety of environments, ranging from tropical forests to dry open woodland savanna. Over the course of the Miocene, Hominoids migrated out of Africa and into Eurasia, where the common ancestor of all living apes probably developed. The gibbon to the most basal modern group, being fairly small and very well adapted for brachiating, swinging through the trees of the tropical forests of Southeast Asia at high speed. More formally known as hylobatids, gibbons have a relatively poor fossil record, with the oldest known forms appearing roughly 14 million years ago although they almost certainly diverged before this, with genetic studies indicating an older split of about 18 million years ago. This was about the same time as the so-called great apes of the family Hominidae, which are defined by their larger size, greater intelligence and more robust teeth. During the warmer climatic conditions of the Miocene, these apes possessed a much wider distribution than they do today if we discount humans. With a variety of forms found across much of Africa and Eurasia, one lineage, the Hominines, contain the modern gorillas, chimpanzees and humans, as well as possibly the extinct Dryopithecines, while the other group, the Pongines, are more relevant to the topic of this video. While Hominines are mostly native to what is now Europe and Africa, the Pongines tended to have a more easterly distribution, ranging from Turkey to Southeast Asia. They may have diverged between 18 and 14 million years ago, although the oldest forms date to around 12 million years ago and dwelt in the Indian subcontinent. While the only living member of Pongine is the orangutan, during the second half of the Miocene, this family was quite diverse and ranged widely across Asia. However, the most impressive member of the group emerged during the early Pleistocene, with this being the imposing and mysterious genus Gigantopithecus. This animal was first named in 1935, when German-Dutch paleontologist Ralph von Königswald noticed some very large hominid molars that were being sold in a Hong Kong drugstore. By 1939, after buying some more of these teeth, he found that they had originated from either Guangdong or Guangxi provinces. However, his ability to locate the exact sites with which these fossils were found was severely hampered by the onset of the Second World War, whereupon von Königswald was captured by Japanese forces and placed in an internment camp. In 1955, a survey team that was led by the Chinese paleontologist Pai Wenzhong was tasked by the Chinese Institute of Vertebrate Paleontology with finding the original Gigantopithecus locality. They collected 47 teeth among shipments of so-called dragon bones in Guangdong and Guangxi. In 1956, the team discovered the first in situ remains, a third molar and premolar, in a cave subsequently nicknamed Gigantopithecus Cave in Nisui Mountain in Guangxi. Since then, confirmed Gigantopithecus teeth and several mandibles have been found from 16 fossil sites across China, ranging from just south of the Yangtze River to Hainan Island in the South China Sea. Other finds of isolated teeth recovered from Vietnam, Thailand and Java may belong to Gigantopithecus as well. It was once thought that two species of this animal existed, with the massive G. blacky and the smaller G. giganteus, the latter of which was native to northern India during the late Miocene and was half the size of its huge cousin. However, G. giganteus has more recently been classified as its own genus, Indopithecus, 
albeit still closely related to Gigantopithecus, and probably living a similar lifestyle. At present, no postcranial remains have been identified, which is probably due to the fact that teeth and jaw bones were dragged into caves by porcupines, with the rest of the skeleton being gnawed away by these voracious rodents, leaving only the hard teeth and mandibles behind. Although once thought to be a potential ancestor of modern humans, anatomical similarities to the Indian Shiva Pithecus and peptide sequencing analysis carried out in 2019 demonstrate that Gigantopithecus was a pongine, having diverged from orangutans between 10 and 12 million years ago. As no postcranial remains of the animal are currently known, it is very difficult to produce accurate size estimates as molar size and total body size do not always correlate well, just an average body mass of 200 to 300 kilograms, or 440 to 660 pounds. If this is correct, then Gigantopithecus would be the largest ape and primate to have ever lived, with males standing almost 6 feet tall on all fours, and possibly up to 10 feet tall when standing on their hind legs. The postcranial skeleton would have presumably needed to have been pretty robust to support such a large animal with Gigantopithecus being a slow-moving terrestrial feeder, like modern gorillas, and unlike its much smaller arboreal orangutan cousins. The structure of the teeth and their associated wear patterns can still tell us quite a lot about how this ape might have lived. The molars are bulky and high-crowned, with carbon isotope analysis revealing that this animal fed on leaves, fruit, and low-lying forest plants. The jaws and teeth were powerfully built, indicating that bark, roots, and tubers may have been consumed as well. Gigantopithecus remains also demonstrate very high levels of sexual dimorphism, with males being much larger than females, indicating that this genus may have lived somewhat like gorillas, with an alpha male guarding a group of females from the intention of rivals. The canines were not very large or particularly sharp, unlike in other male great apes which suggests that they were not utilised as much in combat or display. Witnessing two adult males in the 300 kilogram size range engaging in a brawl must have been quite the sight. Gigantopithecus native to southern China during the Pleistocene, between two and possibly as recently as 215,000 years ago. During this time, the genus was an inhabitant of humid subtropical closed forests while on Hainan Island it would have built in a more tropical environment. Over the course of its history, Gigantopithecus shared its habitat with a variety of other animals, including members of the giant panda genus Iluropoda, the proboscidean stegodon, tapirs, macaques, rhinos, and the Chinese orangutan Pongo Widenreiki. Fully grown Gigantopithecus individuals, especially big males, would have had few predators, although like modern gorillas may have been vulnerable to ambush by big cats, in this case being early tigers and the more rarely encountered saber-toothed cat Megantherion. Despite success during the warmer early Pleistocene, the period between 700,000 to 600,000 years ago saw the transition to a cooler global climate phase, with the humid closed forests beginning to transition into a more open savanna. This also led to increased seasonality, less diversity in food sources at ground level, and a decrease in forest cover, which negatively impacted Gigantopithecus population numbers. Meanwhile, the contemporary Chinese orangutan managed to adapt to these changes due to its smaller size and ability to climb in search of food. By about 300,000 years ago, there is evidence of a struggling G. blackie population, as the numbers of tooth finds in caves become notably reduced, indicating a dwindling population. The stark change in the teeth banding of G. blackie individuals indicate chronic stress in the population, and changes from its preferred dietary behaviour indicate that G. blackie was struggling to respond to the environmental changes on a potentially shrinking territory. It would seem then that its forest refugia changed in structure and became too open and disturbed for this species to sustain itself. It was once thought that hunting from contemporary Homo erectus may have influenced the extinction of G. blackie, although more recent studies have suggested that they could not find any real evidence to support this. Being a heavily specialised forest-dwelling animal, with large calorific needs and a slow rate of reproduction, Gigantopithecus was simply not flexible enough to adapt to the spread of more open savannas across southern China which remained the dominant ecosystem in the region until the end of the Pleistocene. Ironically, the Holocene witnessed the return of humid subtropical forests, but this was all too late for the greatest ape to ever live. Thanks for watching everyone. 
the next episode will be covering the evolution of the Mosasaurs. So until then, I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.